Hello? So now let us solve the problem. We are supposed to calculate this double integral on this domain D. The first thing that you usually need to do in calculating a double integral is to understand uh, your domain. And usually the best way to understand it is to be able to sketch somehow the domain. Okay? So here, uh, I start with setting up a coordinate system. So let us assume that this is our coordinate system, x, y. And then let me start with this one, which is simpler. So I have y greater than or equal to pi over 2. So the borderline of this region is y equals to pi over 2. So let us assume that this is pi over 2, and y equals to pi over 2, we know that it's a horizontal line. Yes? This is for equality, y equals to pi over 2. But here I have y greater than or equal to pi over 2. It means that I am interested so far on the points in the coordinate system, yes, which are lying on this line or above this line. So I'm just drawing these arrows to not forgetting things. Okay. But here... I have two inequalities involved. So let me see the lines or the curves that are, goes uh, in, the, in the boundary of this region. So this one, y squared is equal to x. Okay? That is the same parabola, y equals to x squared, but x and y are interchanged. So instead of having my usual parabola, I will have my parabola in the other direction, yes? So this is somehow assume that this is your parable. Okay? Okay, again, the points on the parabola satisfy this equality, but I want to have y squared less than or equal to x. So this means that either this side, which is inside the parabola, is acceptable, or every point outside the parabola. To realize that, the best way is to locate a point that you already know on which side it is. For example, let me choose the point with coordinates x1 and y0. I know that that point lies on the x-axis, and I know that the x-axis in total lies inside this, area, this curve. So I test uh, the coordinates here. Instead of y, in this coordinate, instead of y, let me write it here. Instead of y, I put 0 to the power of 2 is less than or equal. Instead of x, I put 1. But this is a true inequality. So this means that this side, which includes this point, is represented by this inequality. So I have to be inside this parable. So to show that, so let me do this. Uh, I put an arrow, something like this here, to show that I am interested inside the parabola. So, so far, on the one hand, I have to be above this horizontal line. On the other hand, I have to be inside my parabola. So, this means that so far, this unbounded region, this part that you see, is my reach. But there is a still one more constraint that I have to consider, and that is x less than or equal to pi y. Again, what I do, I will consider this one. But this is just this line that passes through the origin. So that is one point of my line. And then, for example, if I put uh, x to be, for example, I want to uh, make sure that in which direction it is going. Because if I put y equals to pi over 2, then x becomes a little bit larger number, yes? Uh, so if I put uh, y equals to 1, x is a uh, pi, okay? But if I put y equals to pi over 2, yes, x becomes pi squared over 2. So it means that if this is pi squared over 2, and this is pi over 2, so that is another point of my line. So I decided to put... Uh, y to be pi over 2, and then multiplied by pi, it becomes pi squared over 2, that's my x. So another point that I have is here. And then if I connect these two lines, okay, it will go and intersect my parabola at some point, 
And then, of course, it also continues from that direction. But again, I need to know which side of this line is acceptable. Okay, so again, I check one point that I'm certain about. For example, this time, let me take that point because I immediately see that this point lies on this side of that line. And check the coordinates here. It is x less than or equal to pi y. The x coordinate here is 0. The y coordinate is pi over 2. And this is again a true inequality. So this means that I need to consider this side. So I have to consider this side. Okay, so these are all my constraints. So this means that I have to be above the horizontal line here. I have to be uh, inside the parabola and I have to be on this side of that line. So hopefully you agree with me that this is my domain. Okay, so let us highlight this. The equation of this point, uh, the equation of this line is x equals to pi y. And the equation of this curve, if you remember, is y squared is equal to x. So this is the domain that I am supposed to calculate my integral on that domain. And we don't need these information, so let me take them away, not distracting ourselves. And I also don't need these uh, arrows anymore, so let me take them off. Okay, so that's enough. Okay, now we want to calculate this integral. After we understood what the domain is, I go and see how can I deal with my integral. So, you know that for calculating an integral, you can give the role of your free variable to either x or y. Usually it doesn't matter, but from practical reasons it matters, because sometimes if you choose the x value, to be the free value, or you cannot calculate the integral. But if you switch from x to y, suddenly you see that you can solve that integral. So let me explain this here. This is one factor which is important, of course. For example, if I consider x to be, uh, if, if I insist to consider uh, x to be my free variable, then what happens? Then I have to write uh, dx, so I can interpret this as integral. Uh, I have to interpret it as integral uh, cosine x over y multiplied by dy and then dx outside. So if I want to interpret x as my free variable, this is the way that I have to calculate it. Okay. But then immediately you see that I will have problems here. Why? Because here x is a constant as far as this integral is concerned, and my variable y goes in the denominator. If you look back to your studies of integration techniques, you know that at some point you knew about this formula, cosine of a constant number k multiplied by your variable, d of that variable. If I ask you what the answer to this is, based on your previous studies, you immediately tell me that is the answer. Of course, plus a constant here. Okay? So we know how to integrate this combination. But if I give you this formula and ask you to calculate this, and I put my variable in the denominator and I keep k here, this is not doable. Okay? Okay, either it is not doable at all, or at least it is not that simple as before, because this is different from that. So if I write like this, my variable that appears in my integral appears in the denominator. Yes, it is comparable to this situation, so we get a stock. Okay, so this is not good, yes? This is why whenever this happens, you need to think about the, uh, the other alternative. So instead of expressing x as your free variable, let us see what happens if I express y as my free variable. Okay, is it more promising this time? Let us check. What do I mean by that? It means that I interchange the role of dx and dy. I put dx in and I put dy out. And then suddenly you realize that this is possible because now this y is constant as far as this integral is concerned, 
and then my variable is exactly in the numerator. Okay, so I can do that here. I can compare it in that way. Instead of cosine of x over y, I can assume that this is 1 over y multiplied by x dx. And I can give the role of the constant k to this one and just write the formula 1 over k sine kx, but giving the role of k to 1 over y. So this is now doable, yes? Okay. So this is something that you really need to care when you want to decide which variable. Another thing that you can care is about if I insist to put x uh, coordinate to be my free variable. So what I have to do, you see, so this is my, these are my extreme points of this region. Okay. So this means that this is the least x value. And here is the highest x value. So if I want to give the role of x vari free variable to x, I have to start from here and I go up to here. Okay, but that problem is that when I start from here up to here, you see I am always between this horizontal line and this curve. So far, so good. But when I reach to this point, I am still between this uh, uh, horizontal line and the curve, but suddenly when I pass this line, I am between this line and that curve. So it means that this horizontal line is changed to this oblique one. So it still means that if I want to consider x as my free variable, I have to partition my domain into two separate parts and calculate it Calculate in the integral once on this part of the domain and once another one and then add them up. So it makes the problem harder. Of course, even if I choose the harder way here, there is no way for me to do it because I am getting stuck with the integration here. Okay, so what I do, I will change. Uh, so this is another thing that you need to consider when you want to decide about which variable to choose as your free variable. Now, that we know that we have chosen y as my free variable, then I ask myself, what are the limits of y when I am constrained on this domain? It means what is the highest value of the y coordinates of the points inside the domain, and what is the lowest y value? It is very clear. So these points that you see here are extreme points. Hopefully you agree that the lowest y value that I can have is exactly pi over 2. So this gives me the lower limit of integration over y. And to understand what is the highest limit, you see that the highest limit of y is exactly at that point. But this point is not directly given to me. I need to find it myself. So how should I do that? I will say that, okay, this line and this curve are intersecting. So I set up a system of equations. x is equal to pi y and y squared is equal to x. And I solve that and I find my y. Yes? So this means that instead of this x, I put pi y. This pi y squared is equal to pi y. I move it to the left and factor y out. So this means that either y is 0 or y is pi. Of course, I already knew about y equals to zero because this curve and that line also intersect at the origin. What is my interest now is pi. So then I realized that, yes, this line that I didn't know here, this length, this uh, coordinate is actually pi. So good. So this means that y goes from pi over 2 to pi. But now I need to understand what are the limits for x. This is a little bit important to understand how to do it. So I know that these are uh, my y values. So choose one of them, any one, and you need to convince yourself that this is working. So let me take this one to be my y. When you chose your y somewhere in the appropriate range, as we discovered, you draw a horizontal line to cut your domain, yes? So you need to extend it from both sides. But here, if I extend it from this side, I will never uh, cut my domain. So there is no point in extending in that side. I draw a horizontal line and extend it to the right so that it cuts and passes through my domain. So this is the first point 
of intersection when I do that. And this will be the last point of intersection to do that. So this means that from here to here is the lowest value of x, so let me call it x minimum, and from here to here is the highest value of x, it is x maximum. Okay? So this is somehow a common mistake that people take the minimum value of x up to the maximum value of x again. Be careful, this is not the meaning of the uh, dependent variable. If you choose your free variable, this is a correct way of analyzing the problem. But as far as, as soon as you fixed your free variable, your dependent variable should be expressed in terms of your free variable for every choice that you make for your free variable. So I made this choice, y, for my free variable somewhere here, and I extend this line to cut my domain, and then I need to express this x minimum and this x maximum in terms of the y that I have chosen. And this is not hard, because this point lies on that curve, so this is the relation between x and y. So if I give you y and I ask you to find this x minimum, you take this y and feed it into this equation, and then you can correspond, uh, find the corresponding value of x. So if I do that, it is in front of my eyes. x is equal to your y squared. So this is the lowest value of y. So what I do, I start from y squared. And then I go up to the highest value for x for that particular choice of y. The highest value is here, and this point lies on this line, and the equation of that line is simply x equals to pi y. I have given you y, I am waiting for you to give me the answer to x. But again, it is in front of your eyes. x is equal to pi times the given y. So this means that the highest value of x, depending on which value of y I have chosen, is pi y. Okay. Now, this is settled down. The rest of it is just uh, one variable calculus, two times. Once for the inner integral, and next for the outer integral. Yes? Okay. So, here I have two variables involved, x and y, but I am integrating over x. So, what is left at the end is y. So, so for simplicity of writing, let me call this integral i. And I know that this will eventually depend on y, so let me emphasize by writing i of y. Okay? So what I do, I want to calculate i of y. So this is the integral from this limit up to that limit. And then, as I told you, let me rearrange this a little bit so that you can see it better. So a 1 over y times x dx. But as I told you, that as far as this integral is concerned, this is a constant, so this is playing the role of k in my formula. So the formula was, do you remember, 1 over k times sine kx. But 1 over k becomes 1 over 1 over y, which is y, and then sine of kx, 1 over y, which is playing the role of k, and then multiplied by x. That's it. And then I have to calculate it between these two uh, limits. So from y squared to pi y. So what does it mean? It means that I have to replace x with the low upper limit, replace x with the lower limit, and then subtract the results. So, But let us just do this part in our head. So if I replace x with pi y, this becomes 1 over y times pi y. y's are cancelled, pi is left. But fortunately, sine of pi is nothing except 0. So that's gone. And then minus, I repeat my function. But instead of x this time, I put the lower limit, 1 over y times y squared becomes just simply y. That's it. So I calculate i of y. So let me write it here in front of our eyes. i y is nothing except y sine y. Okay. Now, to answer the question mark, I replace this with the expression that I got and calculate another integral. So, finally, 
the question mark is the integral. So you see it is from pi over 2 to pi. And then instead of i, y, I put this expression, I pull this minus sign out from integral, and then I have y sine y dy. But that is also an extremely simple uh, integral. If you have already uh, done your exercises properly, you immediately realize that is integration by parts. So let me write the formula of integration by parts here. So if I have integral of u dv goes from a to b, it becomes uv between those two limits. I am writing the same version as you see in the course book Adams, yes? The, the calculus, the complete, a complete course by Robert Adams, yes? So this is integral u dv is uv minus integral v du from the same limit a to the same limit b. Okay, but here, if you have enough experience, so you know that here I give the role of u to this, and I give the role of dv to this. And I need to find du, because what I need on the right, this is my u, this is my dv. On the right side, I need both u and v, so this motivates you to find v. And then, because you also need V here, you also need DU. So this also motivates you to calculate DU. So let me just write this in front of our eyes. So Y, U is Y. This means DU is also DY. But on the other hand, DV is equal to sine Y DY. I'm asking you, okay, what is V? V is a function whose derivative is sine y, so V is just simply minus cosine y. Okay, so the question mark now becomes, let me write here, so the question mark becomes, I have a negative sign outside, so I put a pair of brackets here, and then I have u times V, u is y, uh, V is minus cosine y. You multiply them, so it becomes minus y cosine y, but I have to choose the limits from pi over 2 to pi. Then I have minus integral from sim pi over 2 to pi. But this time I have v times du. What is v? v is negative cosine. If I put negative cosine here and I pull the negative sign out, it becomes positive. It becomes cosine y. And then, of course, I have du, which in this case is dy. Okay, so if you don't mind, let me make it a little bit closer. Okay, that's what I have to calculate. Okay, how should I do that? So I multiply this minus sign in, so this becomes y cosine y from pi over 2 to pi minus integral. By the way, I can calculate this integral as well. So integral of cosine is simply sine plus, this is plus, this is minus, so this is why I put minus, and then it goes from pi over 2 to pi. Okay, so then I know what to do. So I put pi here, so it becomes pi cosine pi minus, I put pi over 2 here, minus, I put pi here, I put pi over 2 here, and subtract. Yes, but you know that cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so this is totally gone, and cosine of pi is just simply minus 1, so it's because minus pi, and then sine of pi is again 0, but sine of pi over 2 is 1, so I have minus 1, there is also a minus sign here, so this becomes plus 1. And that's right. And the answer, as I proposed in this uh, introduction video, is just actually 1 minus pi. Okay, so I hope that the video uh, was useful for you. If you have any comments, and if you have some suggestions for me for a problem to solve, please do not hesitate and put some comment below this video. Okay, until the next video, be safe and goodbye. Thank you.